Hey there Scorpio, welcome to your July 2019 reading. If you have watched my videos before or if you are subscribed to the channel, welcome back. It's good to see you again. If you're new here and you have not watched one of my videos before, I'm glad that this reading found you and I hope that you get the answers and insights that you're looking for. I'm going to do a little bit of talking at the top of the video and I know some people just do not want to deal with that and they want to jump right into the actual reading. So I'm going to put some timestamps here for you guys and if you want to um, just watch the pre-shuffle, you can find that here. And if you want to go right into the main reading, you can go here. And I will see you guys who are going to leave and go there once I get caught up with you. For whoever is still left here, I want to let you guys know that I am doing the readings a little bit differently than I did last month. I did get a lot of really good feedback about the videos from last month, but I decided that instead of having the description of the actual spread that I'm going to do this month included in this video, it's actually just a separate video and I'll put the link to that video in the description box below. If you do want to know more about the spread itself, you should go watch that video first and then come back here. And just so you guys know what the purpose of that is, a lot of people do want to know more detail about the spread and actually hear me talk about it a little bit more. There are people who just want to learn a spread because they're learning tarot themselves or they're just looking for something new to do. And some people actually like to keep track of the cards that come out during their general reading and do research on their own after they watch the video. And so that just helps them understand how I'm looking at the spread and, and what the different cards mean. So that's the purpose of that. And if you want to check that out, go do that now. I'm assuming everyone has gone to watch that that wants to and that they're back here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and jump right into the pre-shuffle. I do want to just explain this and then I'm not going to explain it anymore for the months coming forward, but I'm going to do it this one time. So the reason that I do not just do the pre-shuffle and meditation on camera is because I have a whole process and I listen to music, which is all music that would have a copyright on it. So I can't actually play that. So I would have to mute myself anyway. So it just makes sense as I have to be muted to just record it and speed it up so you guys don't have to watch me go for however long it takes and I will give an explanation of the cards as a voiceover to that sped up part of the video. So hopefully that makes sense and that's why I do it that way. I had several people ask in different comments on different videos from last month so I've just been explaining that. Okay, I'm going to start shuffling, put some music on that I want to hear. This will speed up very quickly, and then I will see you guys after we're done with the pre-shuffle and we'll get started on the actual main reading. Scorpio, something has caught your curiosity and ignited your passion, and whatever this is, you are determined to do whatever it takes to make it wildly successful. It almost feels like part of the motivation is to show someone or maybe a lot of people just how wrong they were about you, but mostly you're just really loving whatever you're doing because it makes you feel so happy and proud of what you're achieving. Three cards come out together and you'll see those listed on the side in a minute. It's time to focus on loving yourself, Scorp. I feel a lot of you guys are coming out of a very dark and lonely time and you're ready to amp up the fun and start reconnecting with the world. You know how RuPaul says if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love anybody else? Yeah, you feel that right now. Everything about this represents that phoenix rising energy. You're coming back bigger and badder than ever and you're on a mission. Nothing is going to get in your way as long as you embody strength and determination. Best of all, this latest version of Scorpio comes with some major spiritual upgrades. You are getting insights and messages from all directions and you're tuned into all of them. You're not making a move without checking your intuition first and it's working out for you perfectly. The Divine Feminine inside you is either in control or beginning to step forward to orchestrate some really serious magic. All those watery emotions can leave you in a very traumatized state, Scorpio, but those feelings also give you so much insight and knowledge that most people never experience. If you're avoiding letting something end, facing the truth of a situation, or maybe the truth about another person, now is the time to let it all go. 
there is too much new ahead of you to get stuck dwelling on the past. You're emerging from isolation. You demanded to tend to your wounds and process your emotions. There's a much lighter life ahead of you, Scorpio. Enjoy it. You have earned it. Okay, Scorpio, that was your pre-shuffle. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Those are some actually pretty amazing cards that came out. I was excited because it already feels like a Scorpio reading. So I've shared this in other videos before, but I am a fellow Scorpio. I actually have six different planets all in Scorpio. So I sometimes struggle doing readings for you guys because I need to get myself out of the way. But I think I think we're on track here. So I'm going to take the bottom card off the deck. That is going to be your first card, which is the overall energy. I'm going to go ahead and lay the spread out and talk to you guys. I'm just going to pull everything else right here off the top. I'm going to switch cameras so you guys can have a little bit of a better view. Once I get the spread laid out, I'm going to put up a little title slide for the people who did not go to watch the video about the spread, just so you guys know what I'm talking about, because I'm not probably not going to remember to talk very in-depth about what these cards are represented by. So if you didn't watch the video, I will just put up a little uh, bit of information for you guys. And that's actually what I'm going to do right now. And then when we come back from that title slide, we're going to start with these first three cards and we'll see where the reading goes. Okay, so now that we're back from that, I'm going to turn over all three of these cards just so I can take a look at things all together. Okay, so it's very interesting. We have some cards that came out during the pre-shuffle showing up again, um, which is always really interesting when that happens because it's just confirmation that this reading is very much dialed in to the energy of Scorpio. I'm going to really quickly just show you guys um, the cards. I'm going to just put them up here, just so you can see this card number one. That is representative of the overall energy. Here we have card number two. This is what exists between the two people, the connection between the two people. And then this card is coming out as the purpose of that connection, the reason that that connection exists. Okay, so now that you've seen the cards, you know what that is. I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to talk to you guys for a little bit. I may or may not remember to pick the cards up again, so I wanted you to see them before I jumped right into actually talking. For the overall energy coming out here between these two people, it's a very bizarre card to be coming out but we're going to roll with it. So you have the um, Knight of Swords reversed. And this card, when it is reversed, is this... Um, it's really impulsive and unfocused and scattered energy. And it's sort of been that way for a while. And it just makes the people inside of it just feel exhausted and burnt out. It's, it's chaos, really. It's... Um, for this to be the overall energy, <laughs> this I'm laughing because I'm actually resonating with this reading. Um, so who knows? This might just be a reading for me. But yeah, this is a very chaotic sort of energy. And what I'm picking up here is beyond just this unfocused and what I mean by unfocused there, it's not like um, when someone is like scatterbrained. That's the best example I can think of. And that type of unfocused. It, what I'm getting from it is just like there's really no focus going on right now between these two people. The overall energy is an unfocused energy. It's not necessarily aimed. Neither person is aiming energy at the other. 
meaning there's no good energy coming towards either of the people and there's also no negative energy being sent out to either of the people it's just this very tuned out unfocused sort of vibe energetically and the flip side to that though is there's a it's um an unsettled or uh like a restless vibe as well because it feels like very much there has to be some sort of focus at some point. There has to be some sort of attention put back onto this at some point. The per the reason for that is because of what came out in terms of the connection between the two people. You have the Two of Cups coming out upright. And the Two of Cups upright is just very much this really supported partnership and this love that is a two-way street and there's a mutual attraction and it's, it's a really healthy deeply connected sort of love which exists here but this is the connection that these two people have that's why it's interesting having that knight of swords coming out as the overall energy right now clearly something has occurred here so we'll get to that in a moment but before we move into that i do just want to take a look at the purpose behind this connection not only behind the connection but behind the connection and where we are currently you have the high priestess which comes out reversed and this is about pulling away, withdrawal, not speaking. This is a card that is associated with secrets and being disconnected from your own intuition and not being able to trust your gut in terms of how you're evaluating things. Or perhaps even you didn't feel that you, um, you might have felt blindsided by what happened and didn't just did not expect it at all. And so you just feel like you were missing some sort of warning sign or some sort of signal okay so this tells a very clear story of two people who at the core have a very deep connection with one another something has occurred however and it's put them into a state of really not being focused on each other or focused on the relationship and really having a disconnect in terms of the communication now i want to talk a little bit about this in terms of this being the purpose of the connection okay i think that because of how this spread is laid out and the purpose for me is always going to be something that makes whatever this journey is worth it in the end it's the reason that we would agree to go through it it's the reason that this would be a life experience that we would choose to have it's the reason why this person showed up into our lives it's it brings in something that's typically beneficial to us and with this being the high priestess reverse to me when this card is reversed it's not necessarily a good thing okay so i don't think the purpose of this connection is to have these people act more like withdrawn and and keeping secrets and being disconnected from their intuition it's the opposite this relationship is set up in this way so that even though there is strife, even though there is pro there are problems, there are things that need to be dealt with, there's a connection here between these two people that is undeniable. And so therefore, what they would typically do in terms of sort of dismissing dealing with the crap, dealing with the stuff that isn't fun, dealing with the things that make them uncomfortable, and just moving on to whatever the next thing is, and not really being willing to do what they have to do in order to make things work this keeps them from doing that and it forces them to take a look at this which is all the stuff that they need to heal this energy right here okay for those of you that want to explore more deeply just do some research on this card the high priestess read about its upright and its reversal meanings and realize that the purpose of this connection the purpose of this relationship and what's going on in it is to help you likely both of you from what i'm feeling but we'll explore that a little bit more but it's definitely to help at least one of you to switch from this card being in its reversal to being upright okay so I'm going to close out that section because I want to go ahead and move into the next group. And again, 
Um, it's going to be these four cards here at the top. I'm going to put up the title slide just to give a little bit more insight into what these mean, and then as soon as we're back, we'll flip these all four over and take a look at them. Okay, so hopefully everyone knows where we're at now and what we're going to take a look at. This section is what is what happened. This is uh, recent past, so I would say this most likely is within uh, at least, I would say nine months would be as far back as this would go. For some of you, if this doesn't fit what you've recently experienced, you might be slightly behind this, and so this might be what you're right on the edge of, and so it might feel for some of you like this is oh, this is what I thought was happening. Like you might actually be in this right now, but for most of you, this is about the past, okay? I'm gonna flip over all four of the cards here. Scorpio, I'm actually gonna start with this other person here. That is where most of the energy is coming from right now. And I just feel like that is the best place to start. So again, keep in mind, this card is the other person's current emotional state and this card is their underlying fear or issue. I'm going to, um, I'm just gonna show you here, their current emotional state. We have the devil showing up. And for their underlying fear or issue, we have the four of swords reversed. As you can see, I wasn't joking when I said most of the energy right now is coming from the side. Okay, let's talk about the devil. This card gets a bad reputation and it's not necessarily a bad card. Where this person's at currently in terms of their emotional state is they're really taking a look at their darker aspects, the darker aspects of their personality, the shadow part of their personality. They are exploring it but also trying to find a peace with it okay so scorpio we as scorpios are not at all scared of our dark side we are not at all scared of pain and hurt and really diving into the depths of all emotions so for a Scorpio, just knowing what it's like to be sad is not just simply not enough. We need to know what excruciating sorrow and despair feels like. We need to have that reference point so that we are able to always appropriately define what we're feeling. And we're able to assign different levels of feelings and emotions to so many people because we might really truly love someone, but they don't put us into a sort of blissful state because we can't imagine not having them around. That's something that for us is very natural. It's something that for us is just how we are and what we do. For this other person, that's not at all natural or normal for them. It's something that they think is very intriguing about Scorpio. And it's something that actually, in a way, they are envious of it. It's, or They would not say they were envious. They would never use that word. Um, they respect it. They respect this about Scorpio, but it also makes them very uncomfortable when they are on the receiving side of it. And also they feel a pressure of trying to keep up or to be able to show that same level of emotion and feeling. And, and so this is what has put them into this current emotional state. They are trying to see what it's like and they are working to explore what are their depths, what what are they willing to feel and experience just for the sake of feeling and experiencing that? And I think for this person, um, you know, we have this the four of um, this four of swords coming out reversed here for their fear, and it's interesting because they th have a fear of life itself becoming something that just feels stagnant and. They don't want to just feel like 
life is so heavy and so emotional and so complicated and complex and deep all the time that life just starts to feel exhausting. They don't they don't want to have a life that just leaves them feeling like they have nothing left to give because they've just bled emotions all day, right? That that's their biggest fear. And so for them, they're they're over here trying to figure out like am I even going to be able to keep up? Am I even going to be able to do I even have these depths first of all? Like I'm willing to I'm willing to consider it and I'm willing to explore it, but I'm not even sure I have the ability to feel as much as they do. And even if I did, I don't want to feel this way all the time and they seem like that's really just what they want all the time, this really complicated, heavy, complex energy. Okay? I'm going to jump over here to you Scorpio because this is it's interesting here because of I wanted to start with the other side just because I wanted you to have their perspective of you. Now for you, your current emo emotional state coming out here, we have the Ace of Wands reversed. So for you, it's really interesting. Where you're at right now is you just feel like you don't really know what to do right now. It's like you have this sensation that it's time for you to do something. You do feel this something that's underneath the surface, something that wants to come forward, something that wants to be um, explored. And it's very unclear that what it even is. You just, you feel that pull towards a new beginning or it's that um, the phoenix rising sort of energy. Like you feel, okay, it's time for me to come back and and, you're so familiar with that feeling, but there's no clear direction here. And it just feels like not yet. It's almost time, but not yet. And it's been feeling like it's almost time for a while. And so it's just starting to be like, okay, okay like I'm ready. I know I need to do something, but I need some sort of insight. I need some sort of guidance. I need some sort of knowledge about what I need to do or what the next move is. And I'm not feeling that typical inspiration that I normally would feel. So let's look at your fear and issue here. You have the Page of Wands coming out upright. Now, this is one of my favorite cards illustration wise in this deck. I just, I love how that is, is shown because the Page of Wands is this free spirit energy and it's really about being inspired by everything and nothing at the same time and ideas holding the same amount of weight as actual action would okay so this is really interesting coming out in a place of a fear because Scorpios, let's be honest, we can be a bit controlling. We can have a lot of need to really be in control of not only our life, but sometimes we'll even try to actively control the life of the life of our partner because we we actually don't vibe very well with this free spirit energy. We are not we're sort of the opposite of free spirits. We're old souls. We do find comfort in things that are like he heavier, have more of a, of a depth to them. And free spirits are the opposite of that. They're very light. They're very airy. They're very, um, you know, they can change on a, a whim what they're what they're doing or or what their focus is. And that's something that we really do fear. So you can see here in terms of what happened. You, it's very clear. It's an under. This makes sense. Why? we have the situation going on here in the middle because you have on the one side Scorpio who doesn't know if they can be as free spirited as the other person and the other person doesn't know if they can be as deep as the Scorpio. Okay, this makes total sense. So I don't really think I need to talk about it anymore because I think everyone is nodding their head who's listening to this if they've made it to this point because not only is that what's going on here, but that's also just part of the lot in life for a Scorpio is being in a situation where we're told we're too much or we're too intense or we're too extreme or we're too deep or we're too emotional. 
and not really thinking or knowing if we're able to pull that back and ultimately realizing that we don't want to pull it back. That's usually where we end up. We don't want to be different. We actually like our depth and we like our emotion. We like the more dramatic aspects of our personality because the reason that we are that way is because we have spent a lot of time exploring a lot of feelings and emotions. And so in other people, they might be referred to as being passionate people. But for Scorpio, because there's so much emotional intensity behind it, behind the passion that we that we show, it's often labeled as intensity or dramatics, sometimes both. And for us, we understand where that comes from at its core. It's because we just have access to a whole range of, of feelings to express things, and we prefer that. It's almost like if you're fluent in another language and someone tells you you can only speak at like a seventh grade level, you don't, you're not interested in that. Like I've spent time learning all of this vocabulary. I'm going to use, I'm going to use words. I could write a, a novel in this other language if I wanted to. I'm not going to have, I'm not going to limit myself to just conversational exchanges. That's why Scorpios don't like superficial things. We don't like chit chat. We don't like things that uh, don't have a lot of depth to them in terms of our connections with people, both friendships and relationships. We're just not interested. It doesn't hold our attention. Okay. So I'm going to put up a title slide about these bottom four cards. This is what lies ahead. It's where the reading starts to become a little bit more predictive. I'm super curious to see what's going to happen here. I'm going to throw that slide up and then we'll come right back and turn these over. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump into this. I feel like this reading is just it's wanting to come out. It's wanting to be done. I'm going to only turn over um, cards eight and nine. These are the desired outcome from both the Scorpio and the other person. I want to be able to take a look at these and just look at those first. Whew. Okay. Scorpio, coming out for your desired outcome, you have the Six of Coins reversed. And for the other person, we have the Queen of Swords also coming out reversed. Okay. Um... Scorpio, for you, <clears throat> the Six of Coins reversed has a traditional meaning, and it's very much about unpaid debts and lopsided charity. And oftentimes, if it comes out in a reading that's about work or professional things, you might say you're working too hard and not earning enough money, or be careful that you're not giving too much of your time or your money or your energy into things that aren't giving that return to you. And it speaks very much about like self watching out for yourself. Um, protecting yourself from certain financial issues that could that could arise okay um, this is a love reading and so I don't interpret the card this way what I do get from this in terms of your desired outcome is that Scorpio you are you are tired of feeling like you give 200% to relationships and you only get 90% back and I get that completely I do have to point out, though, that this other person's desired outcome, this Queen of Swords reversed, I feel like this is very much about their desire around you. Because keep in mind, too, in between all of this, we still have this Two of Cups energy, which is the actual connection between these two people. So when I'm looking at this desired outcome, I sense both of these people are still very much looking inward towards each other. So... Scorpio, this card, this desired outcome, is what you wish this person would do differently. You wish that they could match you a little bit more and and focus on you a little bit more and give you more attention and be more like you are. But they're not like you. They're different. 
And that is actually something that you really appreciate about them. It's the same thing as I was saying about them earlier, where when this devil card came out, they appreciate the emotional part of you. They really do. They find it very intriguing and they think that it's so, it's compelling to them because they don't possess that inside of them. But what's happened here is it's almost like this line has been drawn in the sand and it feels very much like Scorpio from our side, from your side here. It was this, you know, you either, you either become more like me or, or I'm, you're wrong. You know, you need to fix you need to fix this stuff about you. And for them, it's very similar because they're looking at you, Scorpio, and they're just like, you're so much, you're so over the top with your emotions and everything is dramatic and you can just be so cold and sometimes you can just get mean. And I wish that part didn't exist because when, when it's just, oh, when everything's good, the amount of love and the emotion and how how you are is something that I care and love about so much, but it just becomes hurtful when you decide to be angry. And it's this it's the very definition of the Scorpio sting. When we feel threatened, we don't just say, hey, back off. It's we feel the threat and then we destroy whatever might have possibly threatened to harm us, Bef you, typically before any sort of pain is even inflicted. But here's the catch, okay? Um, <laughs> if you do actually manage to get us to let our guards down and a Scorpio trusts you and then you manage to hurt us, not only do we feel betrayed by you, but we are angry with ourselves because we let it happen. We broke our own rule and we didn't push you out. We didn't shove you away when we thought you just might do something to hurt us. We actually cared about you and let you in and then got hurt. And so that sting is even, it's 10 times worse than the sting of just trying to push someone away. Because at that point we are, we need to burn everything to the ground to again, have that Phoenix moment where everything has been destroyed and we just come out of it and say, okay, well, there's nothing there left. There's nothing left. That's what typically happens. But again, this is a different situation. That approach isn't going to work here. And that's what is frustrating for you, Scorpio. It's very, very frustrating for you. And that frustration, I just want to touch on one thing here and then we'll look at the other cards. But, you know, this card here, the current emotional state for Scorpio and this card here, which is the desired outcome. If you think about this, right, like this is what I want to do and this is how I feel about it. OK, and keep in mind, this was the Ace of Wands reversed. And that's where I talked about this. OK, I know something has to change, but I don't know what it is and I don't know what to do. And I just feel like this is dragging on forever and I don't know how to detach. Well, that's what we're going to take a look at next because the next two cards coming out are what needs to heal both for Scorpio and for the other person. <laughs> wow. Okay. Scorpio. The thing that you need to heal is the Ace of Cups reversed. I'm, I'm going to come back to this just because I think it's slightly ironic what I want to say about this card in terms of what you need to heal, given what I've said the rest of the reading. And I feel like there are several cross watchers who are still hanging in for this reading. And I, because of that, I want to sort of end on this before we go into these last two cards. So we're going to talk instead about the other person, what they need to heal. We have the Eight of Cups coming out reversed. Um, so this card, the Eight of Cups, you know, when the Eight of Cups is upright, it's, it's, it's about um, walking away, basically, about abandoning something, withdrawing, escaping from something, being very disappointed. So when this card is reversed, it speaks to that indecision between whether you should walk away or whether you should try one more time. 
So what I would say for this other person is that they are very likely someone that has a pattern of just completely leaving, walking away 100%, but then coming back and coming back almost with an energy like nothing ever happened, like they never just walked away, like they never... Um, like to this person, they don't understand how confusing that is. It's almost like with Scorpio, how we don't understand how overwhelming our emotions can be because it's just how we feel. We feel that way all the time, every day, nonstop. And so for us, it doesn't make sense that it would be overwhelming because we function that way. That's how we exist. So it's hard for us to understand it. Well, this person here with this Eight of Cups reversed, they don't understand that it is disorienting it's confusing when someone is you know uh, hot and cold hot and cold in and out and it just it happens over and over and over because that's just how they are for them they are someone that they're able to turn their emotions off but it they can't keep it off it's it's almost like it's on a timer but when when it's when that timer's on they feel nothing and that baffles scorpio baffles because we never get to experience what it's like to not feel anything we feel everything all the time this person needs to heal whatever it is that causes them to do this run away come back run away come back and it's rooted very much in It's rooted very much in being abandoned themselves and working to escape from that, the pain of that abandonment. So that could be something that occurred in childhood. That would mean that this person either lost a parent uh, either by death or divorce or the parent just was never in the picture that caused a sense of abandonment where it could be something that happened later in life, not too late in life though because it would have been something that was formative um but it would be a very painful breakup a, a, a breakup where they were truly abandoned by the person and and really got no closure and because they themselves are stuck in that energy of being abandoned and not being able to get closure that's what they do in relationships they abandon and they don't give the opportunity for closure because they they really don't understand what closure is and why it's important because they've never been able to get it. I'm hoping that that makes sense because I think a lot of times it's easy to look at this person and really blame them or hate them or wish bad for them, okay? But I want you to hear what I'm saying. This person had a very traumatic experience. This person lost someone that was very important to them. And they never got to experience closure on that issue. It's something that is still an open wound. Because of that, they don't understand the purpose of closure. They don't understand it as a concept because they have not experienced it. Because this thing that happened where they, where they didn't get it, it would happen when they were really young. And so they don't have a, that experience of wanting something different. Okay? Here's where things get interesting because Scorpio, what needs to heal for you, Ace of Cups reversed. Okay, again, I think this is so interesting because the Ace of Cups reversed speaks to repressed emotions and a notion of loving yourself and trusting your intuition. Now, I would say almost every Scorpio that you ask would say that that's how they are, that they, um, they do love themselves and they do trust their intuition and they deal with repressed emotions, but that's not always true. What I get energetically from this card, Scorpio, is that the thing that you actually need to heal is... That feeling that if someone is not 
constantly digging into the depths of their pain, constantly digging into their worst fears. If they aren't constantly trying to be in that spiritual state and listening to their intuition and and all of this, that they don't actually love themselves or they don't actually love you or they don't actually care about their life. It's learning to see someone who is more of a free spirit, someone who is lighter, someone who is more of the page of wands, which is the underlying fear issue for Scorpio. The ace of cups coming out is a thing that needs to heal. These are confirming each other. Okay, it's learning that someone who is very lighthearted, someone who doesn't take life very seriously, someone who just loves to laugh and have adventures and and have be happy that that's fine that's actually good and we could probably benefit from having that type of person in our life because i think scorpio a lot of times we can get a bit fixated on the painful and negative feelings and we don't allow ourselves to really feel the full range of the positive ones. You know, you think about it. Think about the past year as a Scorpio. When did you feel elated? When did you feel exuberant? When did you feel exhilarated and excited? When were you, you know, not just happy, but just joyous and, and just unable to even process how wildly happy and content you felt? For most Scorpios, that sounds like craziness, but a Scorpio is not just about only experiencing the depths of bad things. It's about experiencing the full range of all emotions, including the good ones. And so if you've had a long period of time, Scorpio, where you've been fixated on the bad things and you've been fixated on the negative feelings, what I would encourage you to do is to try to explore the positive energies with that same enthusiasm and that same approach of wanting to have the full experience of them. And so when you manage to get yourself into a place where you're happy, push yourself to go beyond happiness. And what's the next thing? What's that next feeling beyond just being happy? And try to experience that big push into exploring the top level, the top, top level of positive feelings and positive emotions, because that's what this person brings to the table. And they, remember, this devil energy here is their current emotional state. They are trying to explore themselves and trying to see how much they can deepen themselves. But you have to be willing to try to raise your, think about it vibrationally in terms of energy. They're willing to be like, okay, well, I won't exist up here all the time i'll i'll come down a little bit every now and then would well, you scorpio you can't just stay down here right like you're gonna have to come up a little bit and ultimately when you know would they want to go up to this state you need to be able to match them you need to be able to go above where you typically exist and go to that sort of wild free spirit state with them because you need to share that with them you need to allow them to experience that because it, it, they love it, first of all, and it's important to them. But it's also something that they want you to feel. They want you to experience it. It's the same as you wanting them to have, to be able to match the depth that you have. They want you to be able to match the lightness that they have. And again, okay, it's something that is possible in this connection. It doesn't mean that either of you have to become exactly like the other one, but it does mean that you have to figure out how to have those things balanced. That's, I'm amazed temperance has not shown up here because it's really what this is about. And it very well could show up here because we still have two cards, but you know, it's, if you think about even notions of like masculine energy and feminine energy and figuring out how to balance that within ourselves because we do contain both. Okay. well. Both of these people contain both the lightness of a free spirit and the depths of an old soul. They both have those and they just need to sync them up a little bit better. Because I think what was happening is Scorpio would go way down here to the old soul level and the other person would be like, oh, it's too much. I'm going to go up here to free spirit. And there's this gap that exists between them. 
So they just have to sync it up a little bit better so that they're matching more than they're at these opposite ends. Okay, before we jump into this, I'm just going to explain this because I know not everyone went to watch the other video and I explain it there. Um, these two cards coming out are divine messages. And before we go into that section, I want to give everyone a little bit of time for the people who are still here listening. You get to pick who these messages come from. And so that could be from your spirit guides. It could be from a, um, a soulmate. It could be from a twin flame. It could be from um, guardian angel or from a future version of yourself. It could even be from a loved one that has passed on on that you would like to hear the message from that's totally up to you take time if you need to pause the video to do this feel free to do that i'm going to put the title slide up and then when we come back i'm going to flip these over so just be sure before we come back to that and i turn the cards over and start talking about them that you in your mind have locked in who you want this person who you want these messages to come from what source you want them to come from Okay, so we're back. I hope everyone has the person that's delivering these messages to you. We're gonna, I'm just gonna turn them both over. Again, this one is advice and guidance. This one is the most likely outcome, and I'll talk about what most likely outcome means when I talk about that card. But coming out for your advice and guidance, Scorpio. The Nine of Cups reversed. So here's what I'm getting from this card, Scorpio, and it's actually a very beautiful message because the Nine of Cups, when it's reversed, is about cultivating an inner happiness and working to move away from notions of materialism or dissatisfaction with our lives or even the notion of needing to indulge ourselves. Finding that happiness that exists from looking outward at our lives and just finding gratitude from it okay the nine of cups when it's upright that is the wish come true card it's a dream fulfillment card and so when it's reversed it doesn't necessarily carry that much of a negative meaning it could it could represent someone who is really focused on indulging themselves and sort of materialistic and trying to find love through things versus trying to find love through love but what i feel here scorpio is that it's more about lightening up it's about not indulging yourself in the self-pity not indulging yourself in the need to just feel low and feel depressed and feel sad and feel the struggle as much as as you have it's almost like that that space becomes a little bit addictive for us because we're so intrigued by it and so many people aren't interested in exploring their pain and so because it's not something that a lot of people do sometimes we feel like we need to do it to make up the difference for the people who aren't willing to explore that but really this is saying like you're so close scorpio to having this the ultimate dream come true wish fulfillment card but you're here right now and so the advice coming out from wherever this advice is coming at from you for you is saying you do the work inside to find happiness inside you and let that blossom for a while. Find a way to be grateful and to, to be satisfied and content in happiness and lightness for a while. That's the advice coming out here. Now, last card this is the most likely outcome and here's what i'm going to say about most likely outcome before i show you the card most likely outcome is defined by if nothing changes from where this reading is okay so you have to keep in mind we have this person who's seeing if they can go a little bit deeper you have Scorpio has a fear of being lighter, but feels definitely pulled towards some sort of new way of thinking or some new way of an approach, but they don't have the, the direction that they need yet. If you think about the full story as 
we've talked about it. If nothing changes, if nothing shifts, keep in mind, this could shift for the better, this could shift for the worse, okay? So this just means if things continue, same amount of effort going into it, same sort of ultimate desired outcomes, right? This is what we have. So the Page of Swords coming out upright. I love this. Barring some sort of catastrophe, even if nothing changes and these two people don't put in additional effort, the energy that exists here, and again, it's because of this. Because of this, these, pe these two people are working on things that they need to work on. And there's a motivation of working on them to try to figure out if there's a way of repairing this and making it be what it once was, actually not what it once was, okay? Because the Page of Swords, this is about new ideas, new ways of communicating, curiosity being the driving force, what the most likely outcome is between these two people, if things continue the way they are, is that things will shift and the way that these two people communicate, the way that these two people interact will be radically different than it had been. And instead of finding fault in the differences between the two of them, there will actually be a, a new energy of curiosity about the differences that exist between the two of them and a respect for the differences that exist between the two of them. And that's really exciting for me because if these two people decide to just up the effort a little bit and just, you know, not have this energy of being as withdrawn, if they decide to actually put in the effort and work together on it, to talk about it, to be really open and honest about things, and to put their heads together, it happens faster. But even if they don't do that, ultimately, where they're heading is still to this place of a new, a new beginning of some sort. Now, what's interesting with new is that it could mean that the connection itself is new. But it's tricky here because of this, again, this Two of Cups coming out as the connection. It's almost like an inevitable sort of situation where these two people have to at least try this again after doing work on the things that they know caused the falling apart the first time there they both people just feel that that has to be something that's explored because they have to know whether or not it works okay scorpio i feel like i was just plowing through that i apologize if i was talking super fast but it just it, there was an urgency to it so i wanted to go with it i hope that you enjoyed that i really enjoyed doing that reading for you guys and i'm just going to ask that if you did like the reading and you're still listening to me please take a moment just to give it a thumbs up i love hearing from people in the comments i do go into the comment sections and respond to people sometimes it might take me a little bit of time depending on what i have going on but i do go in and i read I'm seeing people actually interact with each other in the comments now, which I love. I love seeing people jump in and offer advice or asking people for their opinion and advice in the comments. I love that. And I hope to see more of that happening. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please take a minute just to subscribe. And if you want YouTube to let you know when I post new videos, make sure that you also click the bell notification icon. Scorpio, I really enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to doing your reading next month to see what's going on. See if I'm reading still for this group of you or if it's a completely different group of Scorpios. But I really do hope that you appreciated this and I hope to be able to interact with lots of Scorpios after this reading. So 
Uh, fingers crossed. I want to I want to bring some Scorpios into the channel. I, I need to uh, I need to feel that connection from you guys. So I'm going to take a break after this because this reading just I, I need to shake some of the energy off of it because it was very it was a lot. But um, I'll see you guys next month. Thank you so much for letting me do the reading for you. 